Hi, this is Andrew with Askimo, and I'm very happy to be joined today by Dr. Trisantha Nanayakara. He's a senior lecturer at King's College London, specializing in biomedical engineering and robotics. Trish, thanks a lot for being with us today. Thank you very much. Nice, nice to be with you. So, so Trish, the topic uh, that we're going to discuss is robotic surgery. If you can, can we start yeah. from the beginning and tell us what is robotic surgery? Uh, robotic surgery, um, I'll tell you what it is not uh, first. Uh, so uh, people might think that it is, uh, it's a very intelligent robot coming to do surgery, uh, you know, virtually replacing the surgeon. It is not. Uh, it is just really um, a, a set of motorized sticks uh, controlled by an expert surgeon from a remote location. Uh, so uh, usually uh, in uh, Today's, uh, we call it laparoscopic surgery, um, uh, we do in uh, King's College London, the guy St. Thomas Hospital. So what they do is they, they, they insert some uh, rods, uh, one is a camera, one is a gripper, and one is a tool to uh, the body of a patient uh, through uh, very small um, cuts called troca ports, which is about... Well, basically about 12 millimeters in diameter maximum. Um, and then they do the surgery through a, a remote console. So, um, and then the surgeon gets uh, some kind of a 3D visual feedback uh, through the camera system. And then the surgeon decides what to do um, by controlling uh, the tools inside. And then he can replace tools by taking off these rods and then inserting them back into the body. Uh, so that is basically what it is. It is it is not a very intelligent robot doing uh, you know surgery using intelligent decision making uh, at this point. What are some of the advantages of robotic surgery? I think the best advantages, as I said, like uh, it, this, these tools go into the body. Uh, through small incisions like uh, these uh, cuts called troca ports, and then it is less traumatic to the to the patient, um, and then these um, uh, the, 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 these wounds can get healed very fast, and then faster recovery is is one of the best advantages, and then the pain and uh, to the to the patient is very minimized uh, because there's no you know huge cuts to open the body to do surgery as in open surgery. Uh, and then the time uh, is very much reduced to do the surgery uh, because the, the the surgeon doesn't have to uh, you know worry about moving things like the the, the robot takes care of power handling uh, so the motorized uh, sticks motorized tools uh, take care of the you know the bulk of the uh, effort you have to put into the surgery so the surgeon is much more relaxed, and then he can just give commands uh, to move around these tools and grip. And then, uh, so that saves a lot of time. And so uh, in, in terms of uh, reducing the trauma to the patient, faster recovery, and then uh, uh, reduce time to the surgery, is the, they are the, you know, the biggest advantages. And then other than that, uh, for, from the surgeon's point of view, um, the the surgeon operates through a remote console, and then he he is cut off from other distractions. Uh, he he just sees um, this uh, inside the body through the cameras, and then all other distractions are cut off. And then he 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 gets to focus on this uh, surgery. That is one. And then the other thing is um, the 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 he's less fatigue, right? So no, in a normal surgery, he himself has to pull tissue hold to shoe and then you know do a uh, lot of um, lot of effort uh, take effort to do this and then this robotic system takes away that load um, uh, from him and then he can just concentrate on the task so those are the main advantages what is a telemanipulator a telemanipulator is is uh, just a just uh, any mechanical device um, that can that can uh, move objects, pull, rotate uh, uh, objects, but controlled by some somebody uh, uh, from a remote location. Uh, so it can be a robotic 
uh, uh, arm, we'll say an uh, industrial robot arm or a surgical arm. It can be a robot mounted on a marine vehicle, submarine vehicle, or it can be a space exploration or in defense, for example, uh, uh, people use uh, telemanipulators to defuse bombs uh, or to detect things uh, where, you know, it is dangerous to go, like if it is a suspicious item, they send a field vehicle mounted, you know, with a telemanipulator and a telecamera, you know, camera that can give you feedback. So anything that can be controlled from a remote location uh, and anything that has you know, uh, the equipment and the with the manipulators like, you know, uh, fingers or any grippers or cutters or laser guns uh, that can do things. So uh, that is basically a telemanipulator. Mm. You mentioned to me at the beginning of the interview how a surgeon might be able to use robotic surgery through a, a remote location. Can you tell me yeah. what remote surgery is and what are its limitations? Um when we say remote, um, uh, right now it is not really re remote in a sense like, you know, it is done uh, from uh, from hundreds of meters away or kilometers away or from a different country. It is it is, uh, it is very uh, within uh, five, six meters uh, right now. Um, and the only purpose of doing it remotely is that, you know, sometimes the patient is in an MRI system or a fMRI system. Uh, and then the surgeon can see through the body, uh, through this MRI system, for example, let's say a cardiac surgery, uh, and then uh, the surgeon doesn't want to be in this radiation, So, uh, and then he can be in another room doing this uh, manipulation. So uh, in that sense, it is telemanipulation, but um, it's a very short distance communication. So the, 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 the problem uh, with very far away control is like uh, we have to have, you know, control through some kind of a dedicated network or internet. Uh, that is not very reliable at the moment. And it is, the, the delays are very variable. Uh, and then um, you know, it has to be compensated using sophisticated mathematics. So it is not done right now. But in the future, uh, if these things can be solved and the reliability of the internet can be improved and then uh, these variable delays can be compensated accurately. Um, uh, yes, then uh, this can be solved. And the other big problem is the bandwidth uh, of communication. So we um, uh, we have real-time visual feedback uh, to the surgeon, and uh, they should be high resolution. Uh, and then uh, if you do remote surgery um, through Internet, let's say, uh, this um, uh, all these video images, real-time video images should go uh, streamed up, and then all the control commands should come down uh, virtually real-time. Uh, and then that bandwidth uh, problems can can inhibit this, all these things, and reliability can go down. So in the future, if this can be solved, yes, it can be done really remotely. Trish, that is it for this segment about robotic surgery. It was great speaking with you, and thanks for contributing to Askimo. We appreciate it. Thank you very much.